Hello, my name is Andrew and I love to make monsters. Over the years, I have made several Pokemon. So I thought it would be fun to compile one big video showing off all the Pokemon I've created over the years. Now, these are from five separate videos I've put up on YouTube, so you may have seen them before. If you have, still stick around. I'll tell you why. If you haven't, definitely stick around. Now, what I've done with these videos, I didn't just throw them together, which would have been fine, but I wanted to edit them so they fit more as a kind of a cohesive one long video. So I trimmed out some intros, trimmed out some outros, and cleaned up some audio and added some little segments in between to kind of explain you know the upcoming video so the first video or i'm going to call them chapters first chapter is all the pokemon i created before my youtube channel now these are made out of polymer clay and there's a few in there that are made out of felted wool all right let's get started with the first video right after this remember never stop creating the first pokemon i made was this mudkip magnet in august 2012 it is two and a half inches tall and two inches wide then i made a bulbasaur it was going to be for a wall art and I made this guy in December 2012. It is three inches tall and three inches wide, but I never actually used it for that. Then I did made this little hop -ip figurine in July of 2013. Then in October 2016, I made a sand shrew. It's about two and a half inches tall. A marl, which is also about two and a half inches tall. I made these swine nub out of needle felt and use some polymer clay on them. I made a Grimer, who's about three and a quarter inches tall. I also made Dratini, which is around three inches tall. And I made Seal, which is about two and a quarter inches tall. Now, the second chapter is a quick look at the needle felted Jigglypuff I made for an art show in Omaha, Nebraska. So I just finished up this half-scale Jigglypuff out of needle felt, and first of all, I wanted to say or answer the question, what is half-scale? So those of you who don't know, um, all the Pokemon have actual, you know, sizes that they would be in real life. And so I went onto the internet and found out that Jigglypuff would be approximately 20 inches. So I tried to make him as close to 10 inches as I could, and that puts him at about. 26, 25, 26 centimeters. I thought it'd be fun to do some Pokemon in half scale. And originally I wanted to do them full scale. And then when I started working on them, I realized that was unrealistic um, for the amount of material it would take and the time. Although this guy is needle felt, um, I built up a polyester fiber fill base and doing everything on him took about 15 hours. So, and, I, and I'm really happy with the size of him because if you look at him to my hands, I mean, he is big. Uh, almost a little bit hard to get him in the frame here. Um, he will uh, stand on his legs, but also I kind of made him so he could kind of sit like that. Look at how he is. Um, I didn't put any detail on the back. As far as I know, they don't have anything, like a tail or anything, but they do have like their little tuft of hair, so I did that. For his ears, I wanted to do the black, of course, in there, but I wanted to do a little more hair. I thought that would just add a little touch to it. And his eyes, I debated on whether to do them out of polymer clay or do them out of the wool. And for him, I just decided to stick with the wool. But if I do another one, I might try them out of clay and see how they look and maybe even out of gloss coat. So I hope you enjoyed this quick look at this half-scale Jigglypuff out of felted wool. The third chapter is a mashup. So a few years ago, I used to do a lot of mashups where I would take one thing from pop culture and another thing from pop culture and put them together into one creature. So the mashup for this video is a combination of Godzilla, which is my favorite movie monster, and Pikachu, which is arguably the most popular Pokemon. And I'm gonna make Pikazilla. So to start things off, I've got my Pikachu model here for reference and a Godzilla toy for reference. And having these 3D examples really helps when making a mashup. So I'm going to use these Reynolds wrapped sheets to build up a foil armature that I can put my Warbler over. 
So I'm just getting this build up. I want to have the head, the body, and then tail, and the kind of legs or hips. So now I'm just going to heat up my warbler so it's a little bit easier to cut. I don't have to get it too hot. And then I'm going to cut it up into sections to wrap it around the foil base. So I'm just heating this up a little bit more than I did that first initial time. And I'm going to wrap it around and I let it overlap just a little bit so it can stick to itself. And now I'm going to go ahead and heat up some more sections of Warbler to cover my foil base. And I'll continue to do this until I have that completely covered. So now I'm just adding a little bit of detail to it with my ball tool. And anytime I feel like the warbler is getting too cool, like it's not taking the detail, I'll just heat it up some more. And I'm going to go through and I just want to kind of shape the head a little bit better. It doesn't have to be perfect yet, but just give me a general idea of the shape of it. I'm going to heat it up some more, kind of get that jawline, add some textures to it. Godzilla's skin is very bumpy and Pikachu's skin is very smooth. So right now this guy kind of looks like a chibi Godzilla. So and even though my toy example didn't have these sections on the tail, lots of versions of Godzilla have kind of like a segment in tail or these, these indentions that go around it. And I like that look a lot, so I decided to go ahead and use my needle tool here and just kind of press it around and wrap it around to make those indentions. Now, like I said, he definitely looks a lot more like Godzilla than Pikachu at this point. So I need to add some Pikachu elements. So for his legs, I'm going to go ahead and add those little Pikachu feet. So I'm just going to take some scraps of Warbler, heat it up, and get it into that shape. And it kind of looks like the, like a foot of maybe like a bunny or something. And then I'm just doing little indentions to do, you know, for the, have the, for the toes. And I went ahead and did the other one. Now I'm going to go ahead and do the arms. I'm going to do it the same way. I'm just taking these scraps of Warbler, heating them up, shaping them into the shape that I want for the arms. And I'm definitely going with the Pikachu style of arms again, or, you know, Pikachu style like I did with the, the feet for these arms. So I'm just matching that off my model, taking my needle tool to give little indentions for the fingers. And then I'm trying to figure out, you know, where exactly I want to place it. I'll heat up the body and then heat up the arm a little bit. And then those two will bond and I'll kind of take my ball tool in there to smooth them in, add some details and make it look like it's, you know, try to make it look like it's one piece. And I'll just keep going over this with my ball tool till I am happy with it. So I went ahead and did the other arm and now I'm looking at it. So another thing I want to do to make it look more like Pikachu is do the ears. Pikachu has a very distinct look with those cone shaped ears. They're very tall and pointed at the top. So I wanted my Pikazilla to have that same look. That would definitely help, you know, with the mashup and make it look like, you know, it has strong elements of Pikachu. So I went ahead and rolled out one long strip and then cut it in half, smoothed out those edges, and I'm just trying to line it up on where I want to put it on the head. So I'm pretty happy with how those are. So I'm using my model as a reference. Now I'm just going to go ahead and take a black marker and just mark it so I know where to indent them at, so I can line them up the, the best I can. So now I want to go ahead and heat up the top of the head and then just take my ball tool to do those indentions because I don't want them sitting on top. I want it to look like those ears are coming out. And while I was there, I went ahead and just added a little bit of indentions on the top of the head to give it that shape of Godzilla's kind of snout there. So that's the cross between Pikachu and Godzilla. And then I wanted to kind of mark where I was putting the eyes. I want to do that before I put those ears in there to make sure everything looked like it lined up okay. So now I'm just going to heat up the top some more and stick those ears on. And so you notice on this, I did not heat up the ears, just the top of the head. That way I didn't have to worry about distorting the ears at all and I could put them in there and they would bond with that hot warbler that's on the top of the head. And I'm just adjusting this a little bit. I twisted the head 
um, just because I want them to have a little more motion to them. And now I'm going to go ahead and work on the eyes. And so I kind of looked at both my reference items, and I think it would look better if the eyes were more like Godzilla's just because of the shape of his head, where Pikachu's face is pretty flat. Its nose sticks out a little bit, but not as much as Godzilla's. So I thought it would be better if I went with that look for the eyes and the mouth and the nose area, but I'm not doing his mouth as extended as Godzilla's, so it still has a little bit of elements of Pikachu. So I'm going to start off by heating up some Warbler scrap and roll them into balls for the eyes. And I'm just kind of putting them, you know, not sticking them in the eye sockets, but just putting them up there just to see if that size was about right. So now I'm going to set those aside. I'm going to heat up and dig out my eye sockets a little bit more. I need them to be a little bit more bigger. And I can go ahead and place the eyes. Now, I don't want these eyes to be stuck out like this. He's, you know, got a very bug-eyed look. And that's not the look I want for Godzilla. His eyes are more recessed. So I want to go ahead and take some scraps of Warbler, heat it up, and give him these kind of more of a forehead or, or eyebrow area that extends over his eyeballs. And that'll give me more of that Godzilla look to the face. So right now I'm just shaping these out. I want to make sure I have the look that I want, that it matches up with Godzilla the best it can. And I want these to be about as even as possible. So I'm going to go ahead and shape out each piece. Go ahead and shape out some more, more scraps of my Warbla or heat up and get it into that shape that's going to work to go over the, the other eye. And now that I'm pretty happy with how that is, I want to go ahead and heat up just these little scraps of Warbla and make kind of a lower eyelid so that bottom part of the eye doesn't look like it's sticking out as much and it kind of blends in with the head a little bit better. So I'm just wrapping it around to get the shape and then I'm marking it with the X-Acto knife and cutting off my excess. Then I'll heat it up and attach it right below that eye. And I'll go ahead and do the same thing with the other part as soon as I'm done adding these little details. So I've got my second strip of Warbler here for the lower eyelid. And I'm just going to go ahead and attach that. And I'm just taking my ball tool to smooth it in. Make it look like it's one piece coming up over that eye. Now that I'm happy with that, I'm going to go ahead and heat up the top part and put that over the top of the eyeball. And I do want to kind of bring it down in the center a little bit, make him a little more angry. And I feel that matches up with my Godzilla reference toy. So now that I've got those placed, I'm going to go ahead and heat up the top of his head and smooth them in a little bit better because I want it to blend. I don't want it to look like those are just sitting on there. So I'm just using my ball tool to smooth those in and add that texture so it kind of matches the rest of his body. And I'm just getting them shaped a little bit and keep smoothing it in. Just keep going over with it until I'm happy. Now I'm gonna go ahead and start like kind of carving out or indenting the warbler for his mouth. And what I wanted to do is I wanted his mouth to be more open and I want to put in a bunch of teeth. So I've marked out his mouth. I'm going to go ahead and touch up some little details on his face. Now that I'm happy with that, I'm going to go ahead and cut all these little pieces of Orbla that I'm going to use for the teeth. So I'm just going to heat them up, roll them out into little cone shapes, and then I'm going to use my needle tool to get them in place. It's pretty tricky and I don't want to overheat them and have them droop, 
but I want to go ahead and get them so to make sure that they bond. And one thing I could do is if they move around a little bit, I can kind of heat them up and, you know, adjust them with my needle tool as I get the other ones placed on there. So that's the, the real trick with working with Warbler is if you have to heat up the sculpture and you have smaller pieces already attached, those could droop and kind of change their location a little bit and you'll have to adjust them. So you see here a little close up of me attaching one of his front teeth and I'm going to go ahead and finish up the rest of the teeth. So I did skip ahead a little bit just because this video would be like, you know, three hours long if I showed every little touch of detail. So I'm just kind of skipping the parts that are the same, like adding all the teeth. And so here I'm adding the nose and I just heated up a little bit of Warbler, shaped it into Godzilla's nose shaped, and then used my ball tool, a small ball tool to do the nostrils. Now I'm gonna go ahead and heat up the top again, take my needle tool and add little indentions to give it some ridges. I'll add a little bit of different texture and it'll give me more of the look that I want. The last thing I have to do here is just use my needle tool to adjust some of those teeth that moved on me when I was heating up the nose. So with the majority of the sculpture done, the last thing I want to do is do those dorsal plates on Godzilla. So instead of using the traditional shape for the plates, I decided that they needed to be the shape of Pikachu's tail. His tail is very distinct and it has that kind of lightning bolt shape to it. So I thought that would look really cool to have the plates on the back of Pikazilla to be in the shape of Pikachu's tail. And I didn't want to use that shape for Pikazilla's tail because then I thought it would just look like a weird, evil looking Pikachu and not necessarily, you know, Pikazilla. And so it was kind of tricky to figure out what elements to use from which creature, but overall I think I'm really happy with how this is turning out. gonna go ahead and make a few more dorsal plates based on that initial shape and I went ahead and trimmed them down so they could go from small you know to medium to large to small to smaller on the back and I went ahead and cut out two of each size so I could heat them up and stick them together and that way they'd be a little bit thicker than just you know one one sheet of that warbler thickness I wanted to be a little bit a little bit more thick so I'm gonna go ahead and heat all these up and get them shaped and put together. So this is kind of a long process. I don't want to distort my overall look of them, but I'm just going to go through and get them all done. So I use my scissors to hold them in place, heat them up, and then blend them. Now that I have them all done and mostly trimmed down to the size I want, I'm going to heat up just the back of Pikazilla. Now these plates are cooled, so they're uh, nice and sturdy. So I can just press them in without distorting them and they will stay in place. Now this last one here is a little bit big, it won't fit in the area I want. So I had to trim it down, which is fine. And then I will go ahead and heat it up some more, hopefully not distorting any of those ones I've already placed. And then just press them in. All right, so I went ahead and let him cool. His sculpt is all done. Now I want to give him a base coat of gesso so my acrylic paint will stick to him better. So I'm just going to go ahead and cover the entire piece with gesso. I just do one coat. That's what I've done on all my sculptures and I haven't had an issue. So now I'm going to go ahead and let this guy dry overnight. So I want to start this guy off with some black patio paint. This is wrought iron black. And what I want to do is cover the entire sculpture with this black acrylic paint. And the reason why I'm doing this is because I want to dry brush over it and that will make all those raised details really pop on him and give that shadowed look to them. go ahead and let this base coat dry overnight and then I'm gonna start dry brushing some white onto his teeth. Now normally I would mix some yellow in there give him kind of an off-white for his teeth but since I want to do my Picazilla yellow I want to do the teeth completely white and that way they'll stand out against his yellow body. Now that those are done, I'm going to go ahead and start dry brushing his entire body with this neon yellow patio paint, which is another acrylic paint. 
So I'm just loading my brush, getting my excess off on my paper, and just going over the entire piece with this neon yellow, which to me is starting to look kind of green, and it's not really going over the sculpture very well. The clay, or not the clay, I work with clay a lot. The paint is almost a little bit translucent, you know, and so it's going over the black, it's just not covering it. It's not opaque enough, I guess. So at this point, I decided I'm gonna go ahead and go back over it with this acrylic cream coat, pale yellow. So I'm gonna go ahead and just do exactly what I did there and just dry brush the entire piece again with this pale yellow. And you can see here, this is definitely covering a lot better. And since this is covering a lot better, I went ahead and dry brushed the entire sculpture with this pale yellow, minus the eyes. I want to keep those black, like Pikachu's eyes. I thought that would be a good contrast with the yellow body. So now I'm going to go ahead and let this dry overnight. But once that was dry, I realized I definitely wanted to add more yellow to it. It's got too much black showing through. Even though I love the dry brush look, I definitely think it needs to be more the yellow needs to be more dominant on it. So I went ahead and gave it a second dry brushing coat. And once I got that finished up, I'll go ahead and let that dry overnight. Now, looking here at our Picazilla, I want to go back in and try that neon yellow again. I, I like this pale yellow, but I feel like it needs to be more vibrant to represent Pikachu. So I thought I would try dry brushing the neon yellow over the pale yellow. And I really, really like that. Normally I like my dry brushing colors to go from dark to light, but it almost, to me, gives like a glow effect. Like the edges of Pikachu are just, you know, really just glowing, popping. Pikachu's electric, so I thought that really gave the good look for that. So now I'm gonna let that dry overnight, and I'm gonna go in and start working on the rest of the details. So now looking on the back here, Godzilla's plates, have kind of a non-uniform look to their color. It kind of like bursts out. Where Pikachu's tail has brown markings on it that are very distinct. So I thought, well, I'll use the brown, but I'm gonna splotch it on there so it comes up into that plate. And then he also had stripes on his back. And I thought, well, I'd bring those out from those plate markings. And his stripes are very symmetrical or uniform. They're very smooth. And because of my sculpture, I couldn't do that. So I thought I would just take my brush and bring those out into kind of a triangular shape and match the shape that's on those dorsal plates and have them a little bit rough. I mean, it was easier and it kind of went with the look of the character better, I think. And I think it's it's a good mix between Pikachu and Godzilla. So I'm going to go ahead and finish that up. Now I want to add the black detail to the ears like Pikachu has. I think that it definitely needs to have that detail on there. This is a little bit tricky to line up, but I just took my time, used my Pikachu model as a reference and they just gave it a nice solid black coat. Now, Picazilla is almost done. I just wanna do a couple more things. I wanna take my white acrylic paint and go back over the teeth, make them pop a little bit more, make sure they are covered a little bit better, just touch them up until I am happy with them. And then the last thing I wanna do is add some white pupils to match Pikachu's white pupils. So all I'm doing here is I just got a little bit of white paint on my paintbrush and then just kind of dotted it in there. And I'm just going in and adjusting them so they're as close to the same size as possible. I'm doing a last minute touch up. And now I'm gonna go ahead and let him dry overnight. And here is the finished Picazilla. Go ahead and give you a good look at this guy. Really happy how he turned out. It was definitely a very fun piece. I absolutely love Godzilla, as most of you know, and I've enjoyed a lot of the Pokemon content. I love uh, Detective Pikachu. I played some of the games. My kids really enjoyed the cartoon. So it was fun to take these two characters and, and mash them up together into this Picazilla. And I'm really happy how I was able to, you know, capture a lot of key elements from both creatures and come up with this unique hybrid of both of them or this mashup.
the fourth the fourth chapter is a life-size cubone. I made this for my daughter just a few years ago, and I was really, really like motivated to do this project. And then I think I kind of stopped for a while, set it aside, and then went back to it, which is, happens a lot with these larger projects for me. But I was really happy I was able to finish it, and I kept this video 90% intact. I took the intro off, but I'm keeping the outro because I'm kind of goofy in it. And it's real easy for me to be goofy in real life. But when you're sitting there or even, you know, getting filmed and you want to be goofy, it seems too forced. And so this might be a little forced, but I still wanted to keep it in here so you guys can see maybe the goofier side of me if you don't already see it. Before I get started, I printed out several pictures of Cubone to use for reference. Now I'm just going to take some aluminum foil and roll it up into kind of an egg shape for Cubone's body. And I'm going to do this for each piece that I want to make. Like so for his arms, each leg, tail, spikes, head, all that jazz. So I've got each piece made here. And basically what I did is I went my... Bleh, and basically what I did was use my reference photo and doubled it to get me pretty close to a life-size Cubone. So now for the arms, a little trick I did to make sure they're the same size is I used this fabric, fabric ruler and went around the circumference of it so they would match up. So it didn't look like you had one big bulking arm or a scrawny arm or whatever. Now that I've got all those pieces done, I need to cover them with Warbler. So I am rounding out the edges. And the reason why I do this is just because it's easier to smooth. It's not as obvious that it had this like kind of sharp corner. And then I heat up my warbler with my heat gun. So this gets very hot. You gotta be really careful. And then once it's heated up, I fold it or shape it around the foil base and get that all done. Smooth out where it kind of wrinkles. And then I'm going to go ahead and do this for all the pieces. You can see here I've got everything all done. So it's a lot. And this guy's uh, he's quite an ordeal. Now I want to put the pieces together. So I need to heat up both sections. So like where they join at. It's all for the neck. Do it at the top of the body and the bottom of the head. And you can see here I've got almost all the pieces done. Just want to attach the arm and the spikes. Now for the spikes, I want to be really careful and make sure to get them as close to the center as I can. So I'm making a little mark and then I'm going to put both of them on there. So just heat it up, heat it up some more, get some pressure in there so it bonds with the warbler that was already there. I did the same thing for the larger spike. But so this guy's what I'm thinking, you know, done, but I'm looking at it. I'm like, those spikes look way too big. I can't really tell, you can't tell in my reference photos, but the stuff I've looked at, they're way bigger than what I want them to be. So I'm going to go ahead and pull them off and I'm going to take this smaller bottom spike and move it up to where the larger spike is. And then I will cut off the tip of the larger spike and use that for a new smaller spike. I don't know, this is probably the most times I've ever said spike in a video. So getting heating up the larger one so I can cut off the top of it there. That way I'm not spending time redoing it. I've already got it pretty much made. Just a little bit of time switching them around. And everything about Warbler you can reuse. You know, so if you have any scraps, I have these little scraps here. Same with the leftovers from the spike. I can save those and reuse them. You just heat them up. And what's great about these scraps is they work really well to heat up and put in my seam lines. Because all those pieces I attached had a seam line. And I don't want that. I don't want him to look like he's an action figure. So I'm going to go ahead and put some warble in there, smooth it out. And then I want to also heat it up and even out my texture on it because it was smoother in some areas and bumpier in others. Now, one thing about the warbler over the foil, it gets a lot of that texture from the foil. And I'm okay with that for the body, but I didn't want that for the bone and the skull that he wears. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use Thebra for this. So you mentioned, I mentioned in the intro, I was going to use Warble and Thebra. So for the bone and the helmet, or the skull head helmet, is going to be covered with Thebra. And Thebra is nice because you can really smooth it out. But the problem with Thebra, and the reason why I don't use it for everything, is it's not as rigid and it doesn't keep its shape as well. Like it's When you heat it up, it's almost like 
you know, trying to sculpt with gum. I mean, you really have to put it over something unless you don't heat it up as much, which I've, I've only used it a few times, so I'm not an expert on this by any means. So, but I do really like how this is, you know, smoothed out. And now I want to do, well, I want to look, make sure it looks like the right size. Now I want to do the skull. Okay, and you're looking, I'm like, Andrew, that's Warbler. You said you're going to do Thebra. Okay, but I thought of something here because I had some problems with the bone when I was making it. What if I did the skull out of Warbler and then covered it with Thebra? Then I could smooth it out better. So I did look at a 3D model online and that really helped with getting, you know, how different angles, you know, when you're doing a sculpture, you need to see something from all the angles because you want to make sure to try to match it up the best you can. So I'm taking my warbler, heating it up and forming it around his head. Now I did notice as I was getting to this point, like I don't want this to stick to the head that's already there because I want to be able to take it off and continue to sculpt with it. So it kind of stuck here. I had to take my knife and cut it out of there. So I thought, well, why don't I take some parchment paper, put it over the head, and now put the helmet or the skull back over so I could continue to work on it. So well, that's what I'm doing is I'm shaping it out. Now that I've got the shape right, I'm going to go ahead and mark where I'm going to put his nostrils and his eye sockets. So I want to have those eye sockets marked so I can, you know, open those up and then bulk this piece up to make it look like the skull in the pictures. So I'm only showing part of this, but I am going to, you know, obviously do this on both sides. So I just cut in, cut around, and then I take a piece of warbler, heat it up and patch off that part I cut in. Now I could just heat it up and kind of smooth it, but I wanted to make sure it, you know, bonded together really well and was sturdy. Now that I have that all done, I'm going to go ahead and bulk it up with some foil and then I'll put another layer of warbler over that. So as I'm adding the foil, you know, it's darn gravity is going to work against me and it's going to try to pull that down. So I decided I would heat up some little pieces of warbler and use them as almost like tape and kind of stick them to the warbler that's there and onto the foil to hold them in place. And then I continue to add pieces to patch it off and get it all covered. Now I need to add some of the finer details, so I need to add his little, his little fangs that come off to the side, and then it has parts that it kind of flares out on the left and right, so I'll go ahead and add those, and then his little horns, I just rolled up some strips of warbler, and extended those out, so I'm really happy with this, but it is rough, like I don't want it to be this bumpy, so that's why I'm going to add my Thebra, so I'm just heating up my Thebra, and it's still pretty bumpy, but as I keep adding to it, I can smooth it out more. And you can see here, I'm just going to take that in and see how like it just smooths in. And it's very, very easy to smooth out. But the trick is, or not the trick, <laughs> the thing is, it gets very hot. You got to be really careful. I do, you know, get little burns all the time. So now I want to add the cracks to it. So I just heated up the Thebra, use my needle tool to do that. I'm going to do these around the eyes. And I also did some on the other side and the back there. So I'm really happy with this. So now I need to mark out where the eyes are going to be. So I just use my Sharpie traced inside the skull. And now I'm going to use my ball tool to mark for the eyes. And I'll do the same thing for the nostrils. And so I'm using Thebra for the eyes and I thought because that way it'd be a little smoother and I'm hoping when I paint it I could tell the difference after it has the base coat on there. So now I'm taking some Warbler to give the eyes the shape I want. I don't want them to just be these ball eyes. I want them to have this kind of angular shape to them like the artwork. So I'm just heating up, smoothing out my Warbler. Now for the nostril, I'm doing the same thing. So they always show it, it's just solid black, but I thought I would do a little indention for that. Now I'm gonna do the same thing. I wanna add some Thebra for the toes and for his one little claw on his thumb. So I'm just cutting off my Warbler and then I will add Thebra. Again, this I thought would give me a base that was a different texture than the warbler and plus I could smooth it out more so when I'm painting it I could see exactly where the warbler ends and the, the thebra starts but well I'm getting ahead of myself <laughs> so we're gonna go ahead and finish this up 
So now that I've got that done, I need to make his hands. And the first one I'm going to do is his right hand, and that's the one that's going to hold the bone. And so I'm heating up the warbler, cutting off the warbler that's on the side there with my knife, my crafting knife, cutting all out, that all out. And then I'm going to go and cut off the foil. So I want to have him kind of have an open hand so he can grab that bone. So I'm just cutting out the foil. Again, like I said, I can save all this stuff and reuse it for other projects, so there's no waste in here. And so now I've got that shaped open, and I'm gonna go ahead and heat up this piece of warbler to be his open hand. And I'm just getting a little more, a little hotter. Smooth it in there, heat it up some more, and I'm gonna smooth out the edges with a small ball tool so that way it's kind of seamless. And then I'm gonna go ahead and get it shaped so it'll hold the bone. So you can see it's got a nice rounded shape, but now I need to make his thumb. So I'm just doing more of a cone shape. Then it's a little bit long, so I cut that out and I'll use the other piece for the other thumb. Heat it up, smooth it in, add the bone, perfect. And I did go ahead and make nails on it. Sculpting all done, I can start painting it. Well, almost. I'm gonna use some gesso for a surface prep. This thermoplastic isn't very porous. So it's not gonna take the acrylic paint very well. So I'm starting off by covering everything with some gesso. So th the problem I ran into with this is it didn't make the Thebra as smooth as I thought it would be. So it was harder to tell now after this point what parts Thebra and parts Warbler. And obviously I know to an extent, but like with those nails, I was kind of hoping I could tell exactly where they started. But anyway, so now I'm doing a base coat and now I'm going to go ahead, I did a base coat of brown on the body, and I'm doing a base coat of black on the skull. So, getting this all covered. Now that that's done, I'm going to use some light brown on the body. And I decided I'm going to use a sponge to paint it, because I wanted to have a little bit different texture to it. So, I... I don't know, I probably have painted with a sponge before, but I don't remember. But I thought it'd be fun to do this and what's nice is it has that dark brown base and then when i put the light brown over it in the areas it doesn't hit and the crevices it's you know darker and i think it gives it a really neat look so i'm going to do the same thing with the skull but it's much smoother so i'm going to use white and i'm going to cover it with the sponge and i really like this look and i want to use it for an upcoming project but sadly i had to cover it a little more than i wanted to just to get the look of cubone but overall, I'm really happy with it. So now I'm going to do his eyes. I'm just using some white acrylic on that. I'm going to do his nails. And so I'm doing his, you know, his thumbnails and his toenails. And once those are all done, I'm going to mix up some white with my light brown to give it an even lighter brown. And I'm going to use a sponge again to paint his belly. But what I wanted to do is I wanted to go ahead and round off my sponge so again I don't have like sharp edges, I don't have these corners. So I thought it would be easier to make that round shape and not have like a straight line on it. And it did, it worked really well. So now that that's all done, I can glue everything in piece, in place, in piece. So I'm going to glue his bone in place and then I'm going to do the same thing with the skull. Now. I did not cover this with any kind of sealant, um, so that's something that you might want to do if you make a project like this, but I'm not too worried about it. The last thing I'm doing is going to paint his eye. Once I'm done with that, I'm going to let it dry overnight. I want to be the very best, best there ever was. Who's that Pokemon? It's Cubone. Cubone, 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 Cubone. And here is the finished Cubone out of thermoplastic. So again, he was made with Warbler and Thebra. I used acrylic paint to paint him. He took approximately 39 hours. Um, it's quite a lot, but I mean, for a project this size, I was pretty happy with it. That doesn't include cool down, or well, it does include cool down time, but not dry time. But I did work on him for over several months and just kind of took breaks and went back to him when I felt like working on him. So here's a few more shots of him. I hope you enjoyed today's video. If you have ideas of other Pokemon you'd like me to do, please leave it in the comments down below. If you enjoyed this video, 
be sure to share it on social media. It really helps the channel grow. All right. Well, thank you so much for watching. And remember, never stop creating. Bye. And on to our final chapter, chapter five. Yep, that five comes after four. And this is the Mimikyu collaboration I did with JH Creations. If you don't know JH Creations, there will be a link at the end of this video for his version of Mimikyu. And more of that will get explained in the chapter itself. But I had a lot of fun with this project. I'm really proud of, you know, the video editing I did with it and the different things I tried. It's sometimes hard to, you know, be proud of yourself on these things you create because you don't want to sound like you're bragging. But I've been doing this, you know, at this point, this is like November of 2023. At that point, I had almost been doing YouTube for six years. And so it's like, you want to see improvement and you want to be proud of yourself. So take some time when you, you know, do your projects that you think are really good. Be proud of those moments because aren't proud of ourselves enough. But speaking of being proud of, I am very proud of GH Creations. When we became friends and I found his channel, it was a lot smaller than what it is now. And, and, and at the time of recording this, we're only looking about six months after I made the Mimikyu video. And his channel has grown so much and he's created so much awesome content since this Mimikyu and before. So definitely check out his channel and his videos. So, all right, we'll get on to the final chapter. I hope you enjoy it. Please leave a comment down below what you liked, what you didn't like. Anything's, you know, it's fair game. It's a comment section. Have fun with it. Also, if you haven't already done so, please subscribe to my channel. I really, you know, want to grow this community and I greatly appreciate everybody who tunes in. I know that sounds like an old TV, you know, term, but anyway, I appreciate you guys watching. So thank you and let's, let's stop listening to me babble and we'll watch the final chapter. Hello? Hey! Are you ready to begin our collaboration you asked about? Yeah, definitely. Uh, what do you got in mind? Maybe we can each do the same monster, but in a different style, like one does TV and the other does scary. I mean, yeah, uh, obviously I love doing creepy stuff, and maybe you could make something cute. Sure. What did you have in mind? Well, how about Mimikyu from Pokemon? You know, I do them in my style, and you do them in yours. Absolutely. That sounds great. The first thing I do with all of my larger sculptures is make a foil base in the general shape of whatever I'm sculpting. Now originally I was going to make this guy out of clay and then I decided he's a little bit bigger than I like to do with clay projects. So I went with the old trusty thermoplastic and I'm giving him a layer of warbla to start off with. So I'll cover the entire foil base with warbla. Now the warbla is gonna kind of, you know, go in and out of all the bumps and grooves of the foil base. So I'm just using some more pieces of warbla to fill in those little indentions and smooth it out the best I can. Now for Mimikyu's tail, I'm going to use three pieces of warbler in this lightning bolt tail shape. And I'm using three because I want it to be a little bit thicker. It's supposed to be a board, so I thought just using one sheet was a little too thin. And I think this thickness works really well. Now for any of the black on Mimikyu, I am using black Warbla. Yeah, makes sense, huh? But that way I don't have to paint it. And it'll give me some contrast as I'm sculpting it to see, you know, how everything looks together. And so he's got these little triangular shapes coming out of the bottom. And so I'm just going to kind of double those up so they're a little bit thicker than one sheet, similar to the tail.
and then I'm going to alternate with the spaces in between with the brown warbler. Now the brown warbler is going to get painted. Now for his eyes, I sketched out his normal eyes first, but I wanted to make him bigger. I thought it'd be, you know, I'm trying to make him as adorable as I can. So I thought, you know, lots of times cartoon characters have these big, cute eyes. So I thought I would do the same with Mimikyu. His, Mimikyu's real eyes are his lower eyes. The top eyes are just part of his costume. Hey, I just wanted to take a quick moment to ask you a question. Do you like Pokemon? Well, <laughs> there's a chance you do if you're watching this video. So if you like Pokemon, be sure to subscribe to this channel because I already have a few Pokemon videos and there's gonna be several more coming out in the future. All right, so I've got this guy completely covered with Warbla. I added some extra black around the eye sockets. I'm gonna add a layer of Thebra over this now and I'm gonna basically cut those out like he's, you know, wearing a, an outfit. Um, the story with Mimikyu is he dresses up like Mimics, get it, um, as other Pokemon so he can be liked. And so he, lots of times they'll have him dressed up as, you know, a version of Pikachu. And that's his way of like, hey, I'm trying to fit in. I'm one of the cool kids. But he's very small. This is actually life-size or what would be life-size if Mimikyu was real. And so he wears a disguise, you know, made out of, of you know, like an old rag or something. So I wanted to mimic that. <laughs> See what I did there? I wanted to mimic that and have a layer of Thebra over this. And I'm going to texture that Thebra so it looks like cloth. At least that's the plan. And I'm going to have, you know, cutouts for the eyes. So he's like peeking through. Now, why am I doing a layer of Thebra instead of Warbler? Oh, I'm glad you asked. Well, if you have watched my previous videos, in the Oogie Boogie video I did last year, I covered him with Thebra and I textured it with this, you know, with some burlap. And that gave it a nice, you know, burlap texture that Oogie Boogie is. And I'm going to do the same technique on this guy. And basically, so what I'm getting at is Thebra, when you heat it up and... It has to be kind of the right temperature, which I, I don't know what that is. I always just kind of experiment and it'll let you press a texture into it and you can pull it away and it'll leave that texture behind without pulling the fever off. If fever is too hot, it's like sticking your hand in gum and, you know, or stepping on gum. That's even a more closer analogy. Stepping on gum and it pulls up with your foot. And then, so you have to wait for fever to cool off a little bit. And then you can, you know, when it's not all the way cool, just a little bit warm, you'll want to stick that texture on there and then pull it away and it'll mimic the texture of the material you use put in there. It's going to actually be reversed, but it won't be that noticeable because you're gonna have, you know, what's it's gonna be flippy floppy of what the texture is. So after texturing it with the burlap, I did have some little strands that I picked off, but I wasn't worried about getting all of them. Now for his, you know, eyes, his lower eyes, I'm gonna use some Warbla Deco Art. So this is white, and I'm just gonna roll it into a ball and insert it into those eye sockets that I made. Once I have those done, I can use some black warbla for his pupils. All right, I've got Mimikyu set aside for a moment. I just want to mention or remind you that this video is a collaboration with JH Creations and he's doing a creepy Mimikyu. So definitely check out JH Creations video. I'll have that at the end and in the description box. And be sure to check out his other content on his channel. He is an absolute amazing artist. Now with my sculpt all done, I'm gonna go ahead and start painting. But first I'm gonna add a layer of gesso. So it's a surface prep. This will help the acrylic paint adhere to my thermoplastics. And I'm gonna add a layer of 
black for my base coat so I can dry brush over it. I was debating on whether doing black or brown. I felt brown would make it look, you know, dirtier. Like you've been, <laughs> it's been rolling around in the dirt. I went with black and I thought that would, you know, give me my shadowing or, you know, the depth that I want when I want to dry brush my texture. Now for the color of Mimikyu, it's kind of this pale yellow that I'm using. It's a little bit different than what they given his description but looking at artwork of him he seems to vary quite a bit and had the shade of paint i also used a little flashlight to help in the shadowed areas to make sure i didn't miss anything now i'm going to go ahead and dry brush his board tail with a couple different colors of brown i thought that would make it look more like a real piece of wood I also did a base coat of black on that. That you know, makes it kind of obvious, but anyway, <laughs> I did. So I'm just dry brushing a little more of the pale yellow. I just wanted to have it have a little more color to him. Now for his eyes, I decided to go with button eyes. The original artwork shows looks like he scribbled the eyes on there, like as that he made this costume. But I thought it would be a lot of fun to do some button eyes. So my wife has a collection of buttons and she helped me pick out some good ones that would work with Mimikyu. And I think this looks really good like this. I'm using some black warbluff to mimic the thread. And then I'm gonna use some super glue gel, it was a Loctite super glue gel, to adhere that to Mimikyu's false head, faux head, Pikachu head. Now I'm going in and touching up the black. I just I was dry brushing the yellow on there. I'm like, oh, I'm gonna paint the whole thing yellow. I'm like, no, he has black ears. And then I'm just gonna use a number two pencil to sketch out his mouth and then paint that on with some black paint. And the last thing I'm going to do is some additional paint details. I'm doing his cheeks kind of a, I think it's a bubblegum pink. My wife is not a fan of orange and she helped me with a lot of the colors on this. So she picked pink. And then I'm just adding some little white dots to the eyes, give them that cartoony look as they have like the light reflection. Well, I hope you enjoyed my adorable version of Mimikyu. He is already a pretty cute character, but I wanted to kind of amp it up so he was even more adorable. I hopefully I succeeded. Let me know in the comments below what you thought of this challenge and if you thought I succeeded in making mine adorable or if there's something you thought I could do differently. I'd love to hear it. Be sure to check out JH Creations video here, here, here. And you can check out one of my other videos here. Pew, 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 pew. Isn't it Laura Legends that does that? Where's she been? All right. Thanks for watching. And remember, never stop creating. Bye.